Good afternoon. Welcome, and thanks to everyone for joining this OER course walkthrough for Introduction to Business and Principles of Marketing. This webinar is actually last in, in a series that's run all week long for back to school to walk CCCS faculty and staff through some of the most commonly requested OER courses. My name is Elizabeth Shonigan. I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning with Lumen, and then we're also joined today by Lumen's Vice President for Strategy and Communications, Julie Curtis. And Julie's going to be walking us through these OER courses in Blackboard, as well as talk more about some other courses and areas of business that are ready and very easy for VCCS faculty to adopt. So thanks, Julie, for being here today. And then a quick thanks to VCCS for helping us get these webinars up and rolling. Before I introduce Julie further and pass her the ball to present and show these OER courses, let me give some quick context on why we're here and why open educational resources matter. So cost savings, day one access, and the ability and control for you as a faculty member to edit the content, keep it, freely share it, those are just a few reasons to choose OER. We also know now that effectively delivered open materials also have been shown to improve student learning outcomes. And so to learn more about that for the sake of time, if you want to view some of the more current research behind recent efforts with OER, we put a lot of that on our website at lumenlearning.com. Just select the Why We're Effective tab. And suffice it to say, you know, OER is a decision that's fully in your control as a faculty member. And when you choose OER, you are directly and positively impacting issues of affordability, access, and success for your students. And frankly, that's empowering. BCCS has partnered with Lumen Learning to help ease this transition to OER. So our job at Lumen is to find and curate the highest quality open content to deliver it through a secure platform that integrates with your Blackboard and your Blackboard Grade Center, and then to help you be successful by giving you some course design support, implementation support, and then whatever ongoing support you need as you're using OER in your class. This is part of my primary role um, as Director of Teaching and Learning. My background is in ed tech and instructional design, and I'm really, frankly, thankful for the opportunity to work with you and other colleagues at BCCS. So thank you for being here today. As you may know, VCCS can adopt any of the three course types that you see here. Candela, Waymaker, which we'll be taking a closer look at today, and Ohm, the Open Math Solution. So each of these courseware types provides a number of options in different course areas. And at the end of the presentation, we'll loop back around and show you how you can get your own to go right in Blackboard that you can use starting this fall and beyond. I want to briefly hover here and explain what each of these course types entails, and then I'll introduce Julie for a deeper dive into intro business and marketing. Lumen's Candela courses are what most VCCS faculty are familiar with. These courses are a great starting point when you're just looking for a basic e-text with faculty resources like quiz banks, PowerPoints, and other assessments and content. And again, because all of this content is openly licensed, you as the faculty member have full control to edit it, mix it, keep it, reuse it, and really just distribute it as you see fit. Lumen's OM, or Online Homework Manager, is a math-geared OER solution that you'll find very similar in looks, function, and performance to the math systems that are provided by major publishers today. So OM actually grew out from the open solution MyOpenMath, and it grew from the need for a reliable, secure, more enterprise-level system based on this open solution. So Lumen continues to maintain MyOpenMath in collaboration with author David Lipman, and then for OM, you get the added support, reliability, and accessibility that you would expect from an enterprise system. Inside the 12 courses that are currently curated by Lumen, you'll find an e-text, algorithmically driven practice problems, videos, assessments, and other instructional content, basically whatever you would expect from a full course solution. You can learn more about OM at ohm.lumenlearning.com. And now to what we're here for today, Lumen's Waymaker. So these Waymaker courses take the OER content that you'll find in Candela to the next level by layering in a personalized learning approach and some really cool faculty messaging tools that help you build that student connection. These tools include totally customizable, automated, and recommended messages that not only help you identify and reach out to your students that are struggling, but also to find and reward the ones that are working hard and being successful in your course. And we find that that's making all the difference. 
here to walk us through Waymaker and the content and resources available for introduction to business and marketing is Lumen's VP of Strategy and Communications, Julie Curtis. So Julie has been in the higher ed tech sphere for more than a decade. She's led initiatives around strategic collaborations, thought leadership, new product introduction, marketing research, and strategic communications. So there's really no better person to walk us through what we've curated for intro business and marketing. Julie holds a master's degree in public policy from the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University, and her background is also in English from um, Brigham Young University. So Julie, thank you so much for being here and for your leadership. And without further ado, I will uh, pass the floor to you. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, so I want to start by briefly talking about each of the courses that we're focusing on today. Um, the first one is Introduction to Business. And uh, it, uh, it, what, what you see here on the screen is a couple of things. Um, on the right side of the screen is a list of the different modules or chapters of, of the course. So you can see it's got a full uh, set of the topics you would expect in an Introduction to Business course. Um, one of the advantages of using any OER course uh, from Lumen is you have the ability to take this, you can move things around very easily if there's areas here that are not part of your learning outcomes and your coverage in the course, you're able to remove those. Um, if you like to teach something up front or towards the end, it's very easy to move the, the order around for that as well. Um, and then, of course, there's flexibility as you go into the content itself. Um, this business course in particular, I wanted to just speak briefly about uh, where it comes from and what we're trying to achieve with this course. It actually has special roots in the VCCS community. Linda Williams of Tidewater Community College has been a primary developer and subject matter expert working with us on this course. There are other faculty members and uh, subject matter experts that we've pulled in as well, um, but Linda has been really a, a big driver around it. and. Um, and I think the, uh, as, as a result, there's a lot that's going on here that is, is a particularly good fit for the VCCS schools and, and their students. Um, the course is focusing on, it takes a very practical approach around developing good workplace skills. Um, there's a nice set of sample assessments that are threaded throughout the course that are case study style but are very applied so that if students are coming through the material, if you use these, uh, types of assignments, they're going to come through with the ability to actually apply um, the material and, and, and have a, an idea of the, kind, the ways they might use this in everyday work in business settings. Um, we've done a lot around putting timely examples, um, engaging in varied content types, um, contextualizing the information so that people understand why does it matter that I understand the legal environment? Why, what's so important about motivating employees? You know, putting that why should I care about this into really, um, really uh, understandable terms for students. Um, so it ends up being, uh, we, we hear a lot of the feedback about this is, it's a good course, but it's also something that I've got the ability to take and move into my, uh, my everyday activities as I'm going forward, um, looking for a job, uh, being in the workplace. Um, moving to the next slide, um, and some, oh, there we go. Um, uh, Elizabeth, for some reason I'm not getting the, the forward slide controls that I usually get. So, oh, there they are. Thank yeah. you. Okay, sorry for that. Um, the other course that we'll be taking a closer look at is Principles of Marketing. Um, here again, we have the, the list of subjects on the right-hand side. Um, I'll show you in the course where you can find the detailed learning outcomes, and, and that will uh, be a nice way for you to see exactly which content is mapping to um, specific learning outcomes. And here again, you've got complete ability to adjust or reorder or use the areas that align with what you're trying to teach. Um, here in this course, in the design, we wanted to take a very modern digital age mindset to teaching the basics of marketing. And one challenge that we found as we were starting out on the course development was that the existing OER that we found had been, um, was really quite dated, and, and the marketing function has really transformed over the past decade to become much more technology and data-driven. 
Uh, and so we wanted to take this course and do really a fundamental update from the ground up in many ways so that students as they're coming through this course have a very modern view and a modern perspective around the ways that technology and digital marketing drive every aspect really of what's happening in the marketing world. Um, so it's helpful to have great content that has that modern approach. And for you as instructors, um, the reassurance that that type of perspective is built into the content. We also wanted to make it really relatable so that um, students are, you know, we're pointing them to things that they're seeing around them and helping them become smarter consumers um, as well as getting that marketing mindset. Um, a lot of really engaging, timely examples. Here again, a very active approach around developing and applying workplace skills. Um, in this course, there's an iterative set of sample assignments that culminate in the student developing a complete marketing plan. Um, those sample assignments you can choose to use or you can choose to use your, <coughs> excuse me, your own assignments instead. Um, but they align very nicely with the content. And here again, students, um, the feedback we hear is they really like the applied nature of that content and feeling like they're doing work that's actually meaningful and something they can turn around and use. Um, contributors here, again, um, we had uh, Kelly Gillerlane and Linda Williams from Tidewater Community College uh, who were um, uh, involved in the original vision and the design, certainly a lot of feedback. Um, we had other subject matter experts as well, um, but we've got a long history of working with VCCS faculty members and, um, and, and appreciate their input into making sure that these courses are going to be a good fit for the student audiences that we're serving. So uh, with that, just brief overview, I'm going to jump over into Blackboard. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. So, um, what you see here is a, a Blackboard course shell. This should look familiar to anyone uh, in the VCCS who, who teaches. Uh, what we have here is a Waymaker course as it comes into your Blackboard course shell. So all of Lumen courses, including Waymaker courses, really come together for you inside the LMS. That makes it very simple. Students access all of the content here. You as an instructor can access and adjust the content here as well. Um, there's no extra uh, single sign-on. The graded quizzes that are here read directly into the Blackboard gradebook. Um, the assignments come in as uh, assignments in Blackboard, and so you have the ability to look at those, and um, you can evaluate where you want them if you want to use them and, and make sure they're placed in the, uh, in the course accordingly. So uh, when the information comes in, the course materials, this is the instructor view that we're looking at. And so there's a, a folder at the top around um, just simple tips around setting up a Waymaker course and using some of the special tools there. Um, there's faculty resources. Um, I'm going to click into that and show you um, a couple of things. So this is a set of resources that are for um, faculty members specifically. We'll come back and look at the faculty tools in a minute. That's a special feature of Waymaker around messaging and um, alerts, notifications to help you know how students are doing and who might need some extra help. So we'll look at those a little bit later after we dig into the content. Um, I'm going to click in here, the course learning outcomes. This is a really uh, useful area if you are wondering, well, does the course cover this or that specific learning outcomes that are part of what you need to cover and assess? So this provides all the gory detail about the specific learning outcomes and, and which of the modules they're covered in. Um, the way that we've designed the courses, there's very clear alignment, so it's easy to tell which pieces of the course align with which, which learning outcomes. As you go through the accreditation process, that can be incredibly helpful um, in, in terms of making sure that you've got good documentation around the information that your courses are covering and how you're assessing that with students. Um, there's other, uh, other things here. There's uh, PowerPoints, there's quiz banks, sample assignments and exams. Um, there's a PDF of the course. So all of that good information is here in the faculty resources area. Next, we're going to go into the content itself. Um, as the material comes in, it comes in a set of folders. There's uh, folders associated with each module or chapter of the course. And we'll, we'll go ahead and dive into one here. 
So this happens to be the section on business ethics and corporate social responsibility. Um, when you click into the folder, you can, you'll see a couple of things. So there's the study plan, and all of the instructional content is built in there. So we'll go a little deeper in that in just a moment. Um, but in addition, there's a set of discussion forums and sample assignments that align with this part of the course. This is part of where you have the opportunity to decide, do I want to use all of this? Do I want to use part of this? Do I want to throw this out and bring in something of my own? All of these things are openly licensed, and so you can use them or adapt them in any way as you see fit. And because these come in as assignments in Blackboard, um, if you use them, then the, the grading can apply uh, Blackboard rub rubrics and grading tools, and the grading can go right into your Blackboard gradebook. Um, each module also has a graded quiz. Um, you'll see that at the end of each chapter or module. Um, and uh, if you go into the quiz, uh, uh, there you can fully customize all of the questions in the quiz as well. Um, so for now, though, we're going to go into the study plan. And the study plan is a tool that uh, students use as they're working through the material. Um, and the study plan also helps you see really clearly the structure of each of these courses. Um, the structure that I'll go through is similar in the marketing course. Um, each module or chapter in the course begins with a get started uh, part. The first is a why does this matter? It kind of contextualizes and introduces the topic. Then students are asked to do a pretest. Um, then there's the meat, the kind of meat and potatoes of the course, the content itself. And then there's a kind of a synthesizing um, pieces at the end to help students reflect a little bit and synthesize how does all the material come together and make sure they're ready to go take that quiz. So let's start at the beginning. I'm going to walk through what one of these modules looks like in brief. You can see what the OER content looks like. So this is a Why It Matters section. Um, in this topic, you'll see it introduces the topic. This is actually bringing up the Volkswagen uh, case study with the deceptive practices around emissions. Um, so a good, fairly current example that still has repercussions in the news. Um, on any page of the Waymaker course, by the way, if you click on this Licenses and Attributions button, it will give you the original sourcing of the material on that page. And so that's really handy for anyone that's using open content to be able to track and make sure the licensing and attributions are maintained over time. And that's one of the things that Lumen does very well for you. Next, students are invited to take a little quick pretest. So I'm just going to click through this very quickly without trying to get all the questions right in the interest of time. Um, the pretest is really light, simple, um, but gives students the opportunity to preview the content. And then when they've completed the pretest, then they're able to get a score. Um, the, uh, the results screen shows you here's the areas that you already have some foundational knowledge, and here's the areas that you need to learn. And then when you go back to the study plan, right now we're in the, in the instructor view rather than the student view, but I'm going to click on some secret test data here. There we go. Um, so when I activate the secret test data, actually what it does for a student, and this is what would happen, if a student had come through that quiz and missed every question, then this is what they would see. So the, the system is going to earmark for them, these are the areas where you need attention. And the reason for that is because you've missed some questions on your Show What You Know pretest. So uh, when they click into these areas, they're able to see all the learning outcomes or all the learning activities associated with each of these topics. So the ethical legal behavior, business, uh, business ethics, and so forth. I'm going to click into this area, ethical challenges. And there's a, a good variety of content in this area. So we'll walk through and take a look at what that looks like. So here, um, we're introducing the student to this um, part of what they're going to be learning in this chapter. So the different types of ethical challenges, um, defining them, and talking about what's right or wrong with each of those areas. Um, the student can navigate, clicking Next button throughout. Um, and so we're going to start this section. There's a nice case study about Microsoft and making gifts to bloggers and the ethics around that. So some good discussion that, again, is pretty current. It's something students, it's a company students have heard about, um, something that they uh, puts it in terms they can really understand and begin to apply. 
Um, then there's talking about ethical challenges. So after we have that, that, that case study is beginning, and this is a common uh, approach in, in each of these, um, actually in all of our business curriculum, but in both the, the business and the marketing courses, to have a good case study to help dig into some topics, and then, and then talking about the, um, the, the principles behind that so that students are able to then put more, um, put the, the conceptual framework around that and have some real life stories to, uh, and examples to understand how do I think about that? How do I apply that? So um, next, um, there's a simulation. So both the business and the marketing courses have a, um, have a set of simulations that are, that are threaded throughout the course. Um, these are simulations, just uh, giving you a really quick view. Um, these are, uh, most of them are kind of branching story formats. And so um, this is one that's looking at both ethics and, um, you know, wh when is something uh, just a moral problem and when is it an ethical issue, when are there potentially legal implications. So there are several different um, scenarios and students have the opportunity to pick them and it gives them a scenario and gives them a set of choices they can make and they can play out that scenario and see what happens. Um, and so there are different, you know, varying levels. But this ends up being a fun area. We, we get a lot of positive feedback from students saying they like the kind of the real life application and the choose your own adventure um, nature that's part of these. Now, each of the uh, little units here ends with a self-check. So this is a formative um, set of questions that lets the student um, go through if they want to and, um, and make sure they're understanding the information, make sure they're understanding the concept. So here I'm just going to click through these once more. Um, this is also an area where you have the ability as the instructor to, you can add to the number of self-checks that are there. If you uh, have an issue with a wording or something, you have the ability to go in and customize. So a lot of flexibility um, in those questions. The student can go through and take those questions, see how they're doing, um, reflect a little bit on how confident am I in the material. Then they can retake it. It may give them the same questions or a different set of questions. Um, but it gives them that opportunity to reflect and decide, am I ready to move on? Do I really know the material? So that gives you a quick view of what the content itself looks like. And again, the, the, the look and feel of the content, the structure of the modules is going to be um, very similar between the, the marketing and the business course. Um, as the student goes through the content, uh, then they're able to have the, um, the signposting track their progress in the Waymaker courses. Um, I'm going to click my test, my t magic test button again. So here, if I've worked through the material and I'm getting the questions right on the self-check, then the signposting will change for me to say on track and it'll tell me, oh, I got, you got questions correct there um, and here's why. And then when I've taken the graded quiz, there's even another level of signposting that comes in that is providing that additional level of confirmation. So well done, you got all the questions right on your last quiz, um, but it will still highlight for students the areas where they're missing questions. Does the, the first attempt at a quiz, and in Waymaker courses, the, the graded quizzes, students are, um, receive two attempts on each quiz. So they have the opportunity to take a quiz the first time, see how they do, get feedback that can look a lot like this and highlight for them the areas where they need to um, give some attention. And then they can do some additional studying and reinforce their knowledge and take the quiz again and hopefully do better the second time. That's an important principle that we've built into all of the Waymaker courses is this notion of practice and checking and reflecting to students their own uh, learning data so they can make better choices about how they're learning. I will also note that for any Waymaker course, we've done all this great learning design around the content. And so if you wanted to adopt a Waymaker course, you have these beautiful study plans that are part of it. Um, if you're not sure about some of the Waymaker personalized learning pieces, but you like the content, there is also the a Candela version of each of these courses that provides the same content that we've been looking at, but in more of just a standard e-text. Um, uh, look and feel. So students don't have the nice personalized study plan piece, um, but you do have the ability to use that content and it gives you a lot of flexibility around how you want to use or, or potentially customize that content in a, in a Candela course. Um, so uh, this is the, 
the business course. I'll jump over to the marketing course for a minute just to give you a quick look at that. Um, here again, you see the same type of, uh, of introductory modules that we were looking at. Um, and then here, this is the marketing course material. So again, the marketing content, if you um, come into any of these modules, you can dig in. Uh, let's see, I'll scroll down. We'll, let's see, we'll, we'll drop into this module. So here again, the, as you go in, there's a similar approach with study plans, assignments, and quizzes that are listed there. When you go into the study plan, this has that same sort of look and feel. Uh, you can um, click into any of the, the modules and see what the learning outcomes are like. Um, <clears throat> here again, I'll just click through a couple. Um, the business course and the marketing course were um, uh, both underwent development at around the same time. And so the design, for example, on all of the in-course uh, graphics is similar. So if you happen, if a student's in the, the same program and you have to use, be using both of these courses, there will be a, a common look and feel of, across those, which can be really nice. Um, we provide each course with a set of PowerPoints that include things like those graphics. And so um, it's a nice, uh, a nice pairing for instructors if you're teaching a hybrid or a um, face-to-face course and you do some lecturing along with the um, online uh, or digital content. Um, we have some of those tools to make that simple for you. Um, so again, just scrolling through some of this, you can see the marketing course content is similar. Um, we've got nice, uh, again, case studies. Um, we've uh, curated uh, a mix of, um, of uh, kind of text content and video. Um, these courses also have some uh, nice uh, simulations that are associated with them. I think this is one of those simulations here. Um, in the marketing course, interestingly, uh, the simulations carry through a, a kind of a threaded narrative that you are running an ice cream business, kind of it starts out as a mom and pop type ice cream business and starts to introduce things like the notions of supply and demand um, or, uh, or um, uh, distribution or you know, the, the marketing mix, the different uh, core principles in the marketing course. Um, and so in each of the simulations, the student is posed, is posed these questions associated with running this business. And as the course progresses and as you have different uh, you know, nuances, different levels of complexity that are introduced in the course, those start to come into the simulations as well. Um, and so here, this is a distribution simulation where uh, the student has the opportunity to think about how might I expand and start to add different distribution channels into this business. Um, and so uh, here again, it's sort of a, a scenario-based choose-your-own-adventure. And you have the ability to, to go in and um, make some choices and play those out and, and see what happens. Um, so in the interest of time, I won't go through those, but those are a lot of fun to, to play around with. Um, and the simulations do appear in either the Waymaker or the Candela. Um, before we leave the actual courses, I want to take a moment and we'll, we'll go back out to our main um, navigation. And I want to show you one of the coolest features of our Waymaker courses, and that is here in the faculty resources area. If you go into faculty resources in a Waymaker course, the first link is usually for Waymaker faculty tools. And if you click on that, it brings you into a little faculty dashboard that does a couple of things. So um, this is an area, by the way, that when instructors are using Waymaker, they, they love this area because it saves time for them and it provides them really useful insights for them to help them more easily track and reach out to students who are struggling um, and just build connections with their students in general. So here in this area, it's really doing two things. There's a set of recommendations to um, alert instructors when there are students who need some additional help or attention and make it really easy for them to offer that kind of outreach. And then there's also a set of messaging tools that you can set up and in a very automated way that takes no time for you during the course of the semester once they're set up, it will send periodic touch points to students 
that are relevant based on how are they using material, how are they performing in the course. And those, goes out, those go out from you, but it feels to the student, um, uh, even though they're going out from the system uh, automatically because you set them up, to the student it feels like those are individual touch points from the instructor, and very often the student responds to the, those and, and you're able to um, get more insight into how they're doing and deepen and strengthen those relationships with your, with your students on an individual basis. And so it's really great to have a set of tools that just saves a lot of time for you in that process. So what we'll look first at here are the recommendations. So um, on this little front page of the faculty tools, there the first thing are these alerts for you. For, so these are students who are trying but struggling. Um, what that means is Waymaker is watching behind the scenes. It's looking for students who have taken their first attempt on a graded quiz and have not scored very well. They've not hit the target that you set. Um, about what constitutes mastery, what constitutes good, acceptable performance. Um, but at the same time, they are spending time in the material. So the system is watching and it knows that they're using a fair number of those formative assessments, those self-checks that we were looking at. So we know they're working through the material, we know they're taking some time with it, we know they're trying to test their understanding. Um, and so this lists for you those students. So you can see them, you can see their names. Um, I'm going to look first at Daniel. I see that he only got a 60 on his first quiz. This is all test data, by the way, so no FERPA violations going on here. Um, but as we look at Daniel, you can see what his history of the quiz scores it, um, happens to be. You can see the quiz attempts, whether he's been using those formative assessments. And this one we're looking at here is he's gotten a 60 on this most recent quiz. So if we go back, then uh, we can say, yeah, I think I'm going to reach out to Daniel. So if you click this message button, then it brings up a message. Now, this is an automated message template that you have the opportunity to set up early in the term. So you can put the, the language in here. Um, there's, a, there's a default set of language that, uh, or default message that's here. You can tailor that if you want to make it sound like your own voice. Um, but when you push the button, this automatically comes up. Um, it, and it's this message that you can send to Daniel. It says, I see you're struggling in these areas. It automatically reads in from his quiz results the areas that he's struggling. And so that's good insight for you as the instructor to know where he's struggling. It's also good um, highlighting for him about the areas that he needs to focus. And then there's an invitation. And that invitation will depend on um, how it is you interact with your students in an online uh, in an online course, it might be a Skype or an online office hours invitation. In a face-to-face -face or a hybrid co course, you might invite them to come into office hours or set up an appointment. Um, so it has that invitation, and uh, you can tailor that however you want before you send it out. You hit send, and then that uh, is eliminated from your to-do list, and you can go on to the next one. Um, and, and so this is a really nice, simple way for you to keep tabs um, where the system is highlighting for you who is really struggling and trying at the same time. So you know these are the individuals that could really benefit from, from some individual outreach from you. Now, the, um, to look at the automated, the fully automated messages, I'm going to walk very briefly through the communication setup process for these tools. Um, instructors who are using this tell us it takes maybe 10 minutes at the beginning of the term to set this up. Um, you tell the system uh, what email address you want to use for these, uh, these communications. You tell it what you want your signature to be, how you want them signed, how often you want notifications about what's happening here. It also invites you to set the mastery threshold. So this is where you're telling the system if a student is scoring this well and higher, they're doing fine. They're mastering the material. If they're below that, then they are having, um, then they're, they're not performing well enough, and the system will interpret them as needing attention and needing additional work. Um, then you also can set up the dates of the course. Uh, when are you teaching? So the system knows when it should be monitoring and sending things out on your behalf for this course. The next step, uh, you se select a default message personality. Now, in the system, there's two different uh, sets of templates that are the defaults for um, any of the messages that go out. You have the opportunity to customize all of those defaults. And this just lets you pick a voice that's going to be a little more closer to your own. So you have to do maybe a little bit less heavy editing of, of the, the messages before you are finalizing them. 
then you have the opportunity to pick which automated messages you want to use. And Waymaker now has two different automated messages. These are uh, messages that uh, once you've set them up and you've checked them so that you want to use them, the system will just automatically monitor and then send them out at an appropriate point when, he, when it sees that a student is performing in a certain way and needs this message. So the first of these is a study tips message. And this is a message, and I like to think about it as sort of the first line of defense if a student is just not spending enough time. So what's happening here is a student is, is, has not scored well on their first attempt at a quiz and they also are not using the formative assessments. If that's what's happening, then the system says, aha, I know what's happening. Uh, they didn't do as well on the quiz, but they haven't been using, they haven't been spending enough time on material. And so this is a message that goes out from you that says, hey, I can see you took a quiz. You probably didn't do as well as you wanted to. So before you take the next quiz, review the material and take those self-checks. I know you can do better. So you have the ability to um, tailor the wording on that so it sounds like it's your voice. Um, and once you've done that, you have different versions of that message that can go out. And then the system will just automatically send that per out periodically. And it's a nice metacognitive reminder for students and their understanding of, of what should I be doing to be doing better in this course to improve my learning. The other message is a really simple one. Um, but we get really powerful response from both faculty members and students for this one. And it's just a nice work, good job message. Very simply, it goes out when a student scores well on a quiz. Um, what we hear from faculty members is that this is the kind of individualized message they just don't have much time to send because they're so busy trying to identify and reach out to the students who are having trouble. And what we see on the part of students is they so appreciate the positive recognition and they don't expect it. And so um, very often, for both of these types of automated messages, students will respond. They get an email message that comes, it comes from you, um, and they'll respond to you as a result, even though the message came to them through the Waymaker system. But what you'll get in your inbox is a student saying, thank you so much. That meant a lot. That really made my day. Or, you know, if for the study tips message, it's not uncommon for students to respond to that and say, you know, I got scheduled for so many hours this week. It's been tough to find time. And, um, you know, it provides more insight and more opportunity for building and establishing relationship, relationships and understanding between the students and the instructors. Um, what we're seeing also really powerfully is that when, when instructors are using these messaging tools as well as those recommended messages we looked at at the beginning, um, that uh, we're able to erase the Pell eligibility gap and, um, and we're seeing significant improvements in um, things like grades and uh, the number of students who are persisting and completing the course and passing the course. We've been really thrilled with the results that we're seeing from the power of these tools. And in our learning data analysis, we know um, without a doubt that use of these types of messaging tools are making a big difference in terms of the student outcomes. So if you're, if you're wondering about, you know, are there things that I can do that, um, that could really improve that quality of learning experience for my students, um, taking a closer look at the Waymaker courses is, is, is really a good option. There's some power, powerful stuff here that can um, make a big difference for students, but also it's designed in a way that doesn't take a ton of time and effort from instructors. Um, some kind of light touch up front that does um, just a lot, of, uh, a lot of ongoing connection and communication activity um, for you and your students. Um, so those are the things I wanted to highlight. Um, Elizabeth, have I missed anything you'd like me to touch on? No, that was extremely well done. And especially, you know, with those faculty tools, those are one of the most powerful things because we're always concentrating on, you know, the bottom half or the bottom third. But then, you know, everyone loves a good pat on the back. We know that from ourselves in our personal lives, and we can really speak to that, I think, across the board. And so these faculty tools are very powerful. It's simple. Um, it doesn't include a lot of extra fluff, and that's really what makes Waymaker so powerful. So I think that was really well done, Julie. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today and walk through all of that.